Good afternoon, everybody. We've started very well there, as you can see. Uh, I'm Martin McGrath. I'm a director of O'Connor Sutton Cronin Consulting Engineers. Now, lots of people will know O'Connor Sutton Cronin as a civil and structural engineering business in Dublin. And over the last number of years, you'll be aware that we moved into mechanical and electrical engineering, and we spread our rings a number of years ago to other countries and other economies. And I now spend about 70% of my time working in London, which is why Enterprise Ireland have asked me specifically to have a chat to say today. So when I was first asked to do this, I was asked to talk about BIM to win. And I said, well, what exactly is this about? Because I didn't know. Um, so I thought, well, okay, I'm going to try and talk about how we can all use BIM to actually make an advantage for ourselves. And that's something that we in O'Connor Sutton Cronin have been trying to develop over the last number of years with some success. And obviously, we're moving forward to try and do that. So to, to my understanding, BIM is now a digital virtual reality design language. Okay? So when I start to think about this, my understanding of design of buildings and three-dimensional objects, bridges, roads, is that they are created in the three-dimensional imagination of architects and engineers and have been for generations. But we've always never had the tool to transfer that information to construction. So we had to develop from that two-dimensional drawings and plan section and elevation. Then the guy who was going to construct it, the builders, had to retranslate that back from two dimensions back into three dimensions. And then they had to construct it in three dimensions on site. And then we sort of wonder why we had all these problems of communication in our industry. And I think that BIM is in reality a way for us to deal in three dimensions and to bring three dimensions to reality without going back to two dimensions at any stage. That's the first point. And obviously we also need to add the parametrics so as when we build that model, we can actually manufacture using the model. So eventually we should get to the point where we can actually perceive the object, actually design it, go through a whole process of um, a whole process of actually commercially achieving and buying the product and then splitting it into its individual parts, components, be able to manufacture them, be able to assemble them on site, deliver them, and then the client should be able to look after that building for the duration, and then we should be able to actually demolish it at the end, all in this three-dimensional model. That's where we need to get to. I think we're really taking part in this whole building design and construction revolution. In reality, it's a bit like the Industrial Revolution, we've just a long time after it that now construction could move in that direction. And I think that Irish design and construction could lead the way. I don't think we are right now, but I don't think we're as sort of far back as we all think we are. There was a lot of discussions this morning about other countries and how other countries are developing, but in this country we've got a great resource of talent and educated people who are very used to adopting from our economy, which was booming a number of years ago, back to a very small economy now, and we're back to ready to grow again. And in my opinion, this is how construction is moving in to be part of the knowledge economy. The win. There has to be a business case for BIM. There has to be a way of increasing profitability. There has to be a way that businesses are more sustainable through BIM. The stakeholders. There are lots of stakeholders, and in my opinion, until every stakeholder actually sees the benefit and sees the real advantage, BIM implementation will only be a full dream. And obviously, projects are so complex, we've got different clients, different arrangements, all the industry pulling together, and we all want to move forward. But if there isn't a real advantage to people, then they won't actually move forward. So there needs to be a value brought to the project by using BIM. Um, and then I have a couple of hard questions, really. I just wonder at the moment, is our industry, are some people paying? for the actual BIM process, are other people benefiting? And I think we read an adjustment of the whole process so as everybody is gaining from BIM. So we're consulting engineers, we're fitting within that design team framework. For O'Connor Sutton Cronin, we actually, our first movement into BIM in reality was the new National Conference Centre, although we didn't know it was BIM at the time. For many years, structural engineers have developed structural analysis models in three dimensions. We developed a structural analysis model back in 2004 for the National Conference Centre, and we used that model to actually procure the structural steel framework. 
and then the fabricator used that model and converted it using StruCAD into an actual model which was used to fabricate the frame. Now obviously we were still constructing back with two-dimensional drawings, but it was our first move into this area of integrated design into fabrication and into construction. Then we moved on, we designed the first National Children's Hospital on the Matter site, and in that we did use Revit modelling. Um, both the architect used it, we used it for our structural model, and we did, there was a proposal at the time for Metro North, and there was, you know, primary clash detection for Metro North, which was going to be underneath the building, was used within the Revit model. Since then, things have moved on a, quite a bit. Um, we moved into, let me see, sorry, please take a second, sorry, I'm sorry. sorry, I find it difficult to, so I have to look this way. <laughs> okay, so we, we then had to make a, an investment as a business, effectively. We had to invest in software and hardware. We had to invest in training for our people. Then we had to invest in on-the-job training. And then we did some pilot projects. We were up and running and ready to go. And then the question was, can we gain a positive return on this investment? And to, we were... In fact, we knew the BIM language, but the question was, was anybody else using that BIM language? And where would we get teams that would fully integrate with us? The BIM challenges, at this moment in time, I think the market is full of BIM talk, but very few people are fluent in the language. Very few clients have actually invested in BIM, in our opinion, to date. Um, we are still being asked on occasions by clients to send them drawings rather than models. We are working on jobs where we're sending the model out and we're going to tender with the model. And lots of people under pressure, we have found teams where people are reverting back to the traditional way they've done things when they're coming under pressure within a project. Just some of the projects we've actually worked on. Um, this is a project where it was a very large waste to energy plant for a population of 1.7 million. We wouldn't have got the tender stages this project without BIM. This is a project in West Hampstead. It's about 350 apartments with an Irish developer with Ballymore. And on this, this is a fully integrated BIM model, not to the stage of manufacture at this stage, but the entire tender process has been done through BIM. Um, the tenders have been given the model to price, and it's at the moment just about to select tenders. This is the structural model of it. This is a small project in Mayfair, which is known as the, the ICE, the Iceland houses of Mayfair, where people add a lot of basements below existing buildings. This is a three-storey basement below an existing house on behalf of a footballer, and we used the model really as one of our pilot projects so as we could explain the actual process, what he was getting in terms of in the basement areas. This is, again, 500 units of apartments um, at Chelsea Bridge in London, and on this we are fully actively working uh, a BIM modelling as a full team. This is another Ballymore project. This is Embassy Gardens in London. This is one where we're doing the mechanical electrical engineering and the full integration of the mechanical electrical systems has been processed through BIM. There's another one on Kensington High Street. Again, an apartment developed, mixed use, some shopping, uh, apartments and a school. Again, fully integrated BIM project. Then we're also doing at the moment a new bridge in London. This is a bridge from Canning Town across to Leamout Peninsula, um, and that is leading to London's new city island, where there's 1,700 new houses being built at the moment. And again, BIM is essential to all of these projects in terms of delivery. On that project, we are hoping that we will get to the point where we'll go right through manufacture. We've had discussions with precasters in other countries and looking at fully integrating the model right from day one. So we believe we are winning from BIM, we think we're still investing, and we think we will be investing for some time, but we're starting to see serious returns on our investment, and I suppose I'd be encouraging everybody else to go through that process as well. Just, I think there's a win for Ireland in BIM if we fully address it. For many generations, the Irish people and our industry have developed construction throughout the world. Many of the best cities have been built by Irish people then they became the main contracting players throughout the world. And in the 60s and 70s and 80s, and unfortunately now today, we're exporting our talent to people who are educated out of this country after investing in them. And that's an awful shame. 
In the 90s, they came back and we effectively developed the infrastructure of a knowledge economy in this country. And I think we can actually move forward now and use that knowledge economy and export our expertise without actually exporting our people. And in my opinion, that's really what this country can gain from BIM over the next few years.